Hey everybody, it's Dave Vegdale, learningvideo.com. If you watch my recent ND filter shootout of fixed or solid ND filters, um, basically I came up with two favorites. One was the Benro that I've got right here, and there was a Hoya. So I wanted to get in a bunch of different variable NDs, all the way from very cheap, $50, to very expensive, $580. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to go through all of them um, and show you some examples and kind of what I thought. Um, we're going to actually start off with the cheapest one. And this is the Polaroid coming in at $50. Um, it is actually, in terms of all of these, this is really surprising, it has the best color out of all of them. So if I shot with a naked, here I'll show you an example. Here's a, a naked lens compared with this Polaroid. In terms of the uh, colors, like when I'm shooting this chart right here, they all lined up almost perfectly. Um, not as good as the Benra shootout, but very close second uh, was the cheapest filter. So if you're looking for color accuracy out of all of these, yeah, including <laughs> the $580 one, which is actually probably the worst one in terms of color accuracy or introducing color cast, this was really bad. Uh, before you get too excited, this one actually I got out of the running quite quickly because it had a couple of problems. The first problem was just sharpness. Um, like I'll show you an example here. It was by far the, and this is shot all in 4K and I'm hopefully on YouTube you're watching this in 4K. It was very soft and like in the highlights, there was some blooming or some sort of um, diffusion in the highlights that it was doing um, that was softening the highlights as well. So. That wasn't good. And then the second thing in terms of what do you want to do when you're outside, you want to create basically bokeh. You're shooting, like, you want to shoot it like F2.8 outside um, to get that nice bokeh. And what does this do? It ruins your bokeh. Here, let me show you an example. See these kind of cross hatch kind of patterns? That's basically what this ND filter is introducing. All the rest of these ND filters that I'm not going to go through, none of them had this issue. Some of them had a little bit, I mean, it was really tiny, but you don't basically don't want to ruin your bokeh because you are you want to shoot uh, with a shallow depth of field and have nice bokeh. All right, before I go any farther and introduce the other ND filters, I just want to say, if you don't see yours listed or one you're thinking of buying, I'm, I apologize. If you go onto the BH website, there's probably dozens of different brands of ND filters. There's so many, I can't get them all. In fact, I don't like to get more than like eight or 10 of them because what happens if you're running a test, let's say in the morning, and you're running like I was doing this this morning, um, and I was at like 4,900 Kelvin, and I had uh, the white balance of the bare lens with no ND filter on it, 4,900. At two minutes a piece of each one of these, by the time I got done with it this morning and I looked at the temperature, I did another custom white balance and it went from like, it went up several hundred degrees in terms of Kelvin. So it ruined my test. I was like, oh, I can't compare it because I don't know if it's gonna be warm or cool. So I had to wait till like midday to actually run the test where it stayed at 5,600 Kelvin the entire test. Um, so if you get too many of these, it just you just get bogged down. It gets becomes exponentially harder to do. All right, next up are the two Hoyas. Um, there's an NDX type that's uh, $330, pretty expensive. And there's another one that's more reasonable. It's cheaper, but it's still expensive, um, coming in at $119. Um, so these two Hoyas, they both did pretty well. The cheaper one hat was a bit warmer. Um, it took a bit more to correct the color cast um, than the more expensive one. I, to be honest, I would probably get the cheaper one. Um, they both weren't hard to correct. Um, I would basically I had to play with the temperature slider and the tint slider, and I had to adjust the highlights ever so slightly, but the cheaper one was worse in terms of color cast, but it was fairly easy to correct. And the thing I like about both of these uh, on the Sony lenses, um, and this review is more geared towards long lenses, not um, wide angle lenses. And that's why I'm thinking about doing a part three is when I get into wide lenses, you get more vignetting issues and stuff like that. But what's really cool about these Hoyas is I can screw this on and they're not all of these do this. Um, most of them will not do this with, with the Sony lenses. And you can take the lens hood and tighten it like that or put it on. And then you can open up this sliding door and then you can use your finger to slide the ND filter around. So you, in terms of contrast, because if you don't have the lens hood on, um, I was running a test just earlier. Um, if you don't have it on, the contrast just 
can go to crap. <laughs> Basically, you put the lens hood on, all of a sudden your contrast is good again. So that's one of the reasons you might want to invest in these Hoyas. Um, although, I would probably go with the cheaper one, to be honest. They're both sharp. The Boca look good. Um, in terms of vignetting, I ran a few tests and I ran it several times. I couldn't find a good way to uh, really scientifically figure out which one was the best in terms of, or which one is the worst in terms of vignetting. They're all about the same, but again, my test was somewhat flawed, so I don't even want to show some of those results. But I do want to show you the sharpness test um, for both the Hoyas, and like I said before, they're all pretty sharp. Um, all of these, except for the exception of the Polaroid, the Polaroid is just absolutely terrible, and just don't buy it, because <laughs> it's gonna ruin your images. Next up, I think I'm pronouncing it right, what is it, Gen Genus Tech? <laughs> it's funny. Um, the one I, the ND filter shoot I did like, I don't know, six years ago. I don't know why I got it in my mind. Um, this Singray, I was calling it Stingray <laughs> the entire time through the whole review and people in the comments were like, no, no, you said it wrong. I apologize if I'm getting these wrong. This one's not too bad. It's very similar to the cheaper Hoya in terms of the amount of color correction. I had to do minus 420 in terms of uh, it was too warm. Kelvin and the tint was off by six um, so it was a, I think it was a little bit green I think all of these were green none of them were magenta uh, had a little bit you had to take out um, this one will not fit on the Sony cameras with the lens hood unfortunately construction wise it's pretty decent um, it feels nice and smooth uh, in terms of the Hoyas the, between the expensive one and the cheaper one the the more expensive one uh, did feel a lot smoother when you rotated it. All right, next up is the SLR Magic. This is the only one that was fixed. So you could go from minimum to maximum. Once you hit the maximum, um, it has a hard stop. Basically, it won't go any farther. You can hear it. And then you've got this kind of adjustment ring. So you can put this on the top of your lens because once you screw it in, sometimes it'll be on the bottom. You're like, oh, I don't want to put my finger there. I want to be able to rotate it this way. Or maybe you want it on like that part of the lens. Um, this one color wise did require more. It was 700 degrees, too warm, no tint, but the midtones were somewhat, I had to pull some red out of the midtones um, and it was a little cyan in the highlights. Um, so this one was a little bit harder to color correct. Um, and the other thing with this one is you could, sh on a bright sunny day in Colorado, I don't know, wherever you are, lighting might be different, but um, if you want, you're using like lens like this, which is f2.8, uh, and you want to get to f2.8, you can't with this because it stops at a certain distance. And it, I, the best I could do is about an f4 at 50th of a second, shooting at 4K with a shutter speed of, uh, 50 a second. So this one, I don't know. If, you know, I know some people love to have this kind of thing on there and they love not having to go too far because it might create some sort of weird X pattern vignetting wise. I looked at a lot of them. I ran a lot of different tests trying to find like, you know, weird X patterns on all these. I really couldn't find any. And I, again, I might be running my test wrong. I was doing it against like a white sheet um, and I just couldn't get any of them to create sort of that weird X pattern that I have seen on other ND filters before. All right, if you watch my very first ND filter shootout like many years ago, um, this is the one I ended up buying was the Tiffin. Um, I wouldn't buy it again. In fact, I've sold that one since many years ago and I'm probably going to sell all my Tiffins because I don't not, do not like Tiffin anymore. They've got tons of green casts and lots of issues like this one was 700 degrees too warm. Uh, it was a little too cyan in the highlights and a little too red in the midtones. So um, it wasn't a quick uh, adjustment slider of the you know Kelvin adjustment and tint. I had to go into the color wheels to get them to line up to the you know the colors of the bare lens. Um, this one also, when you put it on this lens, and as well as the SLR Magic, obviously, uh, you will not be able to put your lens hood on the Sony 70 to 200. And the last one is the Singray, uh, $580. I threw it into this comparison just because I wanted a really expensive one. I was like, oh, this one's gonna work great. And all it makes, all it make the other ones look terrible. Well, this one was probably one of the worst. I mean, 
The Polaroid for 50 bucks had way better color than this. This has the worst color. Even after I color corrected it and everything, I'm looking at the vector scope after I've gotten the basically the tint and the, the white balance as close as I could for the white, the gray, and the black, the colors. Look at the colors in the vector scope. You're gonna see multiple dots, but basically you should see one basically dot for each one of these colors, like magenta, red, green, blue. Um, this one, they're all over the place. It's terrible. And this was with, and the reason is uh, it's got, I believe, three planes of glass. It's called the Very N Trio, variable ND. It's basically got a polarizer and an ND filter. And I kept turning it and I was trying the different tests to see if the colors would change because usually the color of the sky will become darker as you rotate your polarizer if you're like 90 degrees from the sun. Um, that all worked fine, but I was working on the chart to make sure that, you know, maybe I'm screwing up the colors here by you know having the polarizer part in the wrong section of its travel. And I couldn't, I, I tried all the different 360 degrees of it and the colors were all screwed up all over the place. Um, so that was one thing. The other thing is when you threw this on, like the 7200, um, and you tighten it nice and tight, when you rotate it, you're not rotating the ND filter, you're rotating the polarizer. The only way you can rotate the ND filter is if you stick a finger on it like this, and then you can rotate that part. Because if you rotate, the, uh, if you put your fingers like this, it rotates just the polarizer. It's just like, well, that's kind of useless. So colors, worse. It's sharp, bokeh looks fine, but in terms of usability and colors, I would, <laughs> and price, don't buy this one. All right, so which ones you should buy? I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna go with these solid fixed ones from now on. Because every time I use it, I like brought it in, I was like, I don't need to color correct, it's perfect. The sharp, the bokeh looks good. Um, yes, if you're doing run and gun and you need variable and that's how you're used to like um, exposing your shots with a uh, variable ND instead of your aperture control or your uh, whatever, your ISO, um, I would rather use this because then I, less time in post. With the Sony cameras, the color science isn't great. And if you're gonna screw it up even more with bad ND filters, um, for me, I'm just gonna stick with the solids. Now this one is seven stops. So it's a 2.1 filter. That's a lot. Um, so if you wanna shoot at F2.8 in Colorado on a sunny day, maybe even there's snow in the image uh, or your scene, um, you pretty much need something like this. Um, a six stop will get you, this will get you to f2.8 on a sunny day in Colorado. If you want to get to like f4, like most of these, most where I was testing these was either f4 or f2.8. So I was really cranking, I was really turning it down, um, getting to that max level on all of these different, you know, the the diagram on the side. I'll say you're getting to max. Um, that's where I was testing all of these. I wasn't testing them like an F8. So I was like, why would you use it at F8 unless you were just looking to get the lens sharper and you didn't want to shoot it like F22. In that case, you'd get like something like a four stop. Um, so for me, I'll probably get um, some of these seven stops and I'll probably get like maybe four stops, um, NDs. Now this one is $118. Um, so getting a couple of these is, yeah, it's kind of pricey, but uh, for this particular lens, um, which is, I don't know, $2,500, do you want to put a really bad ND filter on such great optics? Probably not. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.